When we're looking at chemical kinetics, the two things that we pay most attention to are the rates of reactions and the mechanisms or pathways that those reactions take. Let's start by looking at rates specifically. So when we're talking about rate, a rate is really just a change in an observable over a change in time. And that observable can be a lot of things. Um, for chemical reactions, we typically think about that as a change in concentration in units of molarity over a change in time. So let's take a look at a pretty simple chemical reaction. A goes to B. How am I going to describe the rate of this chemical reaction? Well, I need an observable. What observables do I have? Well, in this one, it's pretty simple. I either have A that I can observe or B that I can observe. But how are those going to be different from each other? A little side note up here. Whenever I'm talking about a delta function, let me change color just so that this is off to the side. Delta means essentially we can think of it as final minus initial. So when I'm back over here looking at my reaction, I can think about the concentration of A and look at that rate so the change in the concentration of A over the change in time, that's the final concentration of A minus the initial concentration of A over formally T final minus T initial. Now, when we're talking about times, we're usually pretty comfortable at setting TI, or T initial, at zero, right? That's when you push the button on your stopwatch, and T final is just whatever you read. So we don't often think about delta T as T final minus T initial, but formally speaking, that's what it really is. Now, if I think about this, which one is going to be larger, T, uh, A final or A initial? Which concentration is going to be larger in this reaction? If we set it up like a regular reaction, the initial concentration better be bigger, right? So if we're starting with A and going to B, then the initial A is going to be larger than the final A because this can only go down. That means that this whole quantity is going to be negative. And when we're looking at rates, negative rates don't always seem to make a whole lot of sense. So to get rid of that negative rate, when we're talking specifically about a rate of consumption, then we include that negative sign so that our result is a positive number. Similarly, if I'm looking at this very simple reaction, the rate let me go up here and put a little A in so that we know that that's specifically the rate with respect to A. We might also be able to observe B. As this reaction occurs, B forms and we can make B. So again, change in concentration of B over change in time. And that is again B final, concentration of B final minus concentration of B initial all over T final minus T initial. In the case of a rate of production,
this difference should be positive, so we don't need the negative sign to make our overall rate positive. So when we're talking about rates of chemical reactions, this is what we're really talking about. And another thing that we really need to think about here is, are these rates independent of each other? And I think we can pretty clearly say, no, they're not, because for every A that's consumed, a B is formed. So for this reaction, the rate with respect to A should be equal to the rate with respect to B. So as long as I have a balanced chemical equation, as long as I can get one of the rates, I can get all of the rates. So whatever observable happens to be the easiest to observe, let's go ahead and observe that one and work on our rates in that fashion.